In this week's parasha, Parashat B'Shalach, the Torah tells us of the great miracle, the climax of the Exodus, which is the splitting of the Red Sea. The phrase says, Vayibaku hamayim, that the waters split. It doesn't say the sea split. Vayibaka hayam, it says Vayibaku hamayim. And because of this uh, particular idiom, the sages learn, kol hamayim sheboolam, that all of the waters in the world were split, not just the Red Sea per se. Let's try to meditate upon this, uh, this very amazing uh, phenomenon that at the time that, the, that the, this great miracle of the splitting of the Red Sea took place, simultaneously all of the waters on earth and maybe even in higher realms, all waters split. So since all waters split apart, let's first try to... Uh, to examine the different symbols in the Torah, there are different things, metaphors, that are likened to water. The most common thing that is likened to water is the Torah itself. En mayim el Torah. Water refers to the Torah. There's another very, very important uh, fundamental service of, of the Torah, which is likened to water, which is tshuva. The second verse of the Torah concludes that the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. The Spirit of God is the soul of the Mashiach, the sages say. And the fact that the soul of the Mashiach hovers over the waters means that it, he depends and he hovers over the waters of Tshuva, that when the Jewish people will return to God, to do tshuva, shleima, complete tshuva, that is the time that the Mashiach will come. So water can either refer to the Torah, or in certain places it says that water is a symbol of tshuva, returning to God. There's even a third symbol that is used, that we find in the sages, that sometimes water refers to God himself. Ein mayim ela hakadosh baruchu. And this is derived from a verse in the prophet that says that Hashem is mekor mayim chayim, is the source of living waters. So the fact that Hashem is the source of living waters from this is derived en mayim ela hakadosh baruch Sometimes it says en mayim ela tshuva. Mayim water is tshuva, is returning to God. Most often we find the expression en mayim ela turam. Water refers to the Torah itself. So the fact that at this very climax of the Exodus, all of the waters in the world split apart. So let's try to understand what that means in reference to the Torah, in reference to Tshuva, and even in reference to HaKadosh Baruch, to Hashem himself. In reference to the Torah, there are two different interpretations of what it means that the waters split. The Torah has two basic dimensions to it. The outer dimension, which is the legal dimension or the body of the Torah. And the inner dimension, which is the soul of the Torah. And just like in creation, initially water was all one body, one essence. But then, on the second day of creation, God created the firmament in order to separate between the higher waters and the lower waters. There's also a, a, a case of splitting the waters, the second day of creation itself. In the Torah, the higher waters, in the Torah per se, the higher waters are the inner soul of the Torah, the mystery of the Torah, Kabbalah, Hasidut. The lower waters are the revealed dimension of the Torah. Sometimes we're even taught that the higher waters are Torah in general, and the lower waters are all knowledge, all scientific, secular knowledge, all of science is the lower waters, which also ultimately will become one, as we'll explain, with the wisdom of the Torah. But in the Torah itself, if we say that water refers to the Torah, the splitting of the waters is the revelation of the two dimensions of the Torah that first have to be revealed each by itself and then have to be united. 
Another meaning of the splitting of the waters in reference to the Torah is that we find that in the oral Torah especially, different sages have different differing opinions. And Eilu ve'eilu divrei alukim chayim. Even though there can be different contradictory opinions that one says white and the other says black, but nonetheless, both of them are simultaneously true. They're both the words of one living God. This obviously is a paradox, but this is one of the secrets of the splitting of the waters, that there is one water. Actually, in Hebrew, the very word water itself, it's one, but it's in the plural form. So that one water has different, different appearances to it, different manifestations. But in essence, splitting of the water can either refer to the two dimensions of the Torah or it can refer to the fact that very often we find in relation to one concept or one idea, there are two differing opinions, but both of them are simultaneously true. And emet al Torah. Truth is the Torah. What about tshuva? Now we'll go to the second symbol, the second thing which is symbolized by water, which is, which is uh, tshuva, returning to Hashem. In reference to tshuva, there is what is called tshuva ila'an, tshuva tata, the higher tshuva and the lower tshuva. The higher tshuva is returning to Hashem with great, great joy of the experience of coming close and becoming one with God. The lower tshuva is the tshuva that has a sense of bitterness because of the experience of how far I am at present from a God, that I'm still far, very far away from a God because of, of my deeds, which were not uh, proper, not correct. So I'm very farly removed from, from God, from Hashem. Sometimes the sages say that the two levels of tshuva are tshuva from love and tshuva from fear, which also is related. The tshuva from fear is the fear of being distant, distant and far removed from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, from Hashem. The tshuva of love, the love of being attracted and clinging and becoming one to my beloved, which is HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Once more, the two dimensions of the waters of tshuva are either tshu, referred to as tshuva from great joy versus tshuva from bitterness, which means the tshuva from feeling close, of coming, now that I'm coming close to Hashem, and the tshuva of where I'm coming from, that I was so far away from Hashem, or it's referred to as the tshuva from love and the tshuva from fear. What about HaKadosh Baruch? How can we say that there are two, we can split the waters of divinity per se, of HaKadosh Baruch Ein Maim El HaKadosh Baruch So here we're taught in Hasidut, here we need the Zohar and the Hasidut to explain that even though Hashem is absolutely one, Echad Yachidam Yuchad, nonetheless HaKadosh Baruch has two ways of manifesting himself, of revealing himself to us. One is his transcendence, which is referred to as Or Ein Sof HaSovev Kolamin, the infinite light that surrounds or encompasses all of the worlds, all of reality. And the other is his imminence. His imminence is Or Ein Sof HaMemalei Kolamin, the infinite light that fills all of reality. So once more, the splitting of the waters is the revelation that at one at the same time, Hashem is totally, absolutely transcendent, and together with being transcendent, nonetheless, he is a personal God. A personal God means a God that we can experience, that we can relate to, that we pray to, and that we feel that he's always with us, directing, helping us, guiding us along our path in life. Now that says, Vayavo b'nei Yisrael b'toch hayam b'yabasha, that the children of Israel came entered into the sea on dry land. Meaning that when the sp sea is split, when the waters are split in part, so there's something that enters in between the waters. The waters are not just split in order to remain split. 
Just like on the second day of creation, the firmament entered between the two waters, the two dimensions of the waters, and ultimately the firmament is not only separated, but ultimately its purpose is to unite. The same thing is true of the children of Israel. The children of Israel is a power, the spiritual, a, a divine power that enters between the two dimensions of the water that are split apart, and ultimately the children of Israel is the power to unite the two, the two dimensions of the waters. That phrase, which actually repeats twice in the Torah, Vayavu b'nei Yisrael betoch hayam be'avashah, that the children of Israel entered the waters on dry land, equals a very, very important number, Begemati, 1,430, which is 55 times 26. 55 is itself the sea, that, uh, one of the words that appears in the phrase. Hayam, but it also equals the word hakol all. 26 is the value of the tetragrammaton. Vashem's essential name, Yudke Vavke. Meaning that this phrase, Vayavo, B'nei Yisrael, Betoch Hayam B'Yabasha, that the children of Israel entered into the, into the sea on dry land, this reveals, because of the fact, or thanks due to the fact, that the water split, and now the children of Israel enter between the water. We have to try to think that every drop of water in the whole universe split and the soul of Israel entered in between the two dimensions of the water. There has to be a revelation first of two dimensions that the water split and then by means of the children of Israel entering between the waters it all becomes one, hakol havaya. Everything is, is God. God is all, all is God.